Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Heather. Today we are doing my January wrap up. I know it's going up a little bit late, but you know, never, never late than never, or better late than never, I guess I should know the quote before I actually say it. But I ended up reading a total of 15 books and I had one DNF. And if you know me, I don't really do a lot of DNFs, or I don't DNF a lot of books, so I'm just going to jump right into it. book that I read I finished on January 1st because I was in the middle of reading it into the new year and I ended up reading Grown by Tiffany D. Jackson. I ended up giving this book five stars. I thought it was fabulous. Was it an enjoyable read? No. Was it a very hard read? Yes. It was a very very hard read but I really did like the way Tiffany D. Jackson set up this book. I liked that it went from from present to past and I liked that the end of each chapter was like a cliffhanger going into the next part of the book. I thought that Enchanted was your one of was a typical teenager who made decisions based on what she wanted instead of really thinking about her decisions as a whole. Because you know, if you're around teenagers, you know that they don't make the best decisions. You know, once they set their mind to something and they want to do it, they're going to do it, whether it's a good thing or a bad thing. And Enchanted is a, an aspiring singer. She wants to be a singer. And she tries out for this BET young, or this, I, I, I don't know if it's an actual, like, uh, I don't know if it's, it was a made up. I don't know. Anyways, it's it's a singing competition and she wants to try out and she ends up trying out by tricking her mom into going with her and there she ends up meeting Corey Fields. Um, she doesn't win the competition but she meets Corey Fields and the story goes from there. This is a story about grooming young women. This is a story about escape. Um, this is a story about human trafficking. It's not an easy story at all, but it is super important because this story shows how young women, especially young black women, are targets for grooming and are targets for human trafficking and how grown men do these things and they know how to do them and they know how to get away with it and they know all the little tricks to get past the laws and Corey Fields is a horrible human but with that being said I really do think that this is a important story for young people not just young girls but young people in general because it's not only young girls it's not only women who get human trafficked and who get groomed it's also about boys too and young men so it's a really, really, really important book. I read the author's note and it said, or Tiffany D. Jackson said that this book was not about the R. Kelly case. It did have a lot of similarities in it, but I did see the differences. And her reasoning behind that, or her reasoning behind writing this book was to show how easy it is for young people to get in to bad situations and how grown adults do these things to young people just to have sat just to satisfy themselves for selfish reasons so i really did think this was a great book if you haven't read it yet you really need to i think it's important i don't think that it's appropriate for everybody like young adult wise but i do think that people need to read it because it's it's a really important book. Again, it's very hard. Trigger warnings are at the very beginning of the book. There are a lot of trigger warnings in this book, but if you haven't read it yet, I would highly recommend this book to you. The next book that I read going in a completely different direction was Tenth Girl by Sarah Faring. This is a horror science fiction novel about a girl named Mavi or a woman named Mavi who goes to this boarding school in South America and it's in the middle of nowhere. It's on an island set off from everywhere else. It's off the coast of Argentina and 
it's a it's just a weird book there's some paranormal aspects there's some science fiction aspects there's just some weird stuff going on she is not actually a teacher but she gets hired on to be a teacher because she has forged documents and she just needs to get to, she just needs to get away from her family and where she lives because it's very violent and she wants to get away from that so she has a family member that helps her do that but it's about haunted mansion just like it just like the headline says haunted mansion a family curse a twist you'll never see coming welcome to Bacaro school it it's weird the less you know going into this the better it's going to be for you i ended up giving this 3.5 out of 5 stars just because of the pacing and i thought some of the twists were a little odd but it was a really cool introduction to what I, what I, why I read this book. Like it was, it was a really cool introduction to that. Um, but yeah, I thought that it was, it was unique. It was a very unique book. It's not going to be for everybody. You will see some reviews about the way that indigenous people were represented in this book because there is a fake or not a, well, yeah, it's a fake. It's a made up indigenous group in here. And a lot of people had um, some some things to say about the way that it was handled. So if you want to go read reviews based off of indigenous people's reviews, I would recommend doing that. But I, I thought that it was a unique book. Again, it's not going to be for everybody. So going into it with a grain of salt and an open mind, I would say. Then the next book I read is Truly Devious by Maureen Johnson and I ended up giving this four stars. I loved this book. It was a great murder mystery book. It's about a girl named, ooh, what's her name? Stevie. And Stevie is very unique. She's very eccentric. She, not a lot of people understand her, not even her parents understand her. So she wants to go to this um, academy called the Ellington Ham Academy and only people who have very unique personalities and are a little weird get accepted into this academy and it's basically like it's it's basically a charter school where you go in and you focus solely on what you're interested in but you do have other core classes but it's it's very hands-on and this school just lets you pretty much do what you love instead of having to sit through classes that you don't like although you do have to take core classes but most of the classes are geared toward what you want to do with your life and Stevie wants to be a detective and there is a specific murder mystery about the school that she wants to solve like that's her first case she wants to solve it I read this more as a middle grade book than I did a YA book it was Stevie was written very immaturely but I think that the author did that on purpose because she is quite immature and you do see the different maturity levels of these students like there's some very very mature students while there are some very very immature students and Stevie falls in that immature category but I did think that seeing that difference between the students was real like if you are around stu or if you are around teenagers you do see that immaturity level. You see where some are like super mature and then some that aren't quite there yet. But I, I really did enjoy this. I thought the murder mystery aspect was really cool. I love, obviously, if you if you watch any of my videos, you know that I love murder mysteries. But I really did think this was, uh, it was a cool book and I ended up picking up the second one because this one left off on a cliffhanger. So, woo! And then the next book I read is Bunny and this is, this was a wild ride. <laughs> wild ride ended up giving this four stars it is about okay so if uh, we'll just go into this the heathers if you've ever watched that 80s movie and then the craft think about it that way that's how i'm going to pitch it to you because i don't want to tell you too much about this book but just know it's about a girl named samantha her name actually is samantha heather mackey there we go you got that Heather in there, didn't you? <laughs> but uh, she is a grad student at a university, and this university is not set in a very good part of town. Like, there's a lot of crime, and there's a lot of things going on that are kind of swept under the rug. And if you go off the campus, there's a good chance that you'll 
get hurt in some way, like mugged or murdered or something like that. But there, so there's already a lot of different things going on. And then there's also this group of girls that call themselves the bunnies, hence bunny. And they are a little off their rockers. And yeah, so weird things start happening and it's, it's very odd. It's, it's very weird. I didn't think I was going to like this book as much as I did, but I guess I like weird horror. I, I, I like this. The only thing I will go ahead and tell you is that if you do not like, or if not, well, you shouldn't like it anyways, but animal abuse, if you have a big trigger with that, don't, I wouldn't read this book. I'm just going to go ahead and tell you that right now. I would not read this book, but I ended up giving it four stars. thought it was really weird, but in a good way. Like, it was the weirdest good book that I've ever read. It was very odd. Then I ended up reading The Wife Upstairs by Rachel Hawkins. And I ended up, I got, I picked this book up because it was the book pick for Gabby Reads in her new book club called The Book Troop. So I ended up picking this up. And I was going to pick this up anyways because it's a Jane Eyre retelling. And if you don't know, Jane Eyre is one of my favorites. One of my favorite classics. So I ended up I, I, when I saw Jane Eyre retelling, I was like, okay, yes, okay. But this is about a girl named Jane, who is a dog walker for this very richy neighborhood in out in Birmingham, Alabama. And that was another thing that I really liked about this book is I live pretty close to Birmingham, so I know about a lot of the places that they were talking about, and I thought that it was pretty cool that they were talking about where like a place that I'm familiar with my best friend lives in Birmingham so but um so I thought that, that was really cool and about and she walks dogs for this Richie neighborhood and it's like a very cookie cutter safe neighborhood with very catty women and husbands that sometimes aren't always the best and you know anyway so while she's walking this dog, she sees this house at the very end of the cul-de-sac that's kind of like set off and it's a little bit different than all the other houses. And she ends up meeting this guy named Eddie when he basically tries, not tries, but almost runs her over with his car. And they end up forming a relationship. At first she starts walking his dog and then she's like, ooh, okay. He has a lot of things that I like because Jane likes to steal things from people. She likes, she thinks that all these richie people have all this stuff, so she deserves it too. And she steals from the people that she works for. So, Eddie is a target, but then she sees that Eddie is very good looking, and Eddie is a dream dude, maybe. Easy target for her. And then stuff just starts going wild. She finds out that Eddie's wife just randomly disappeared, along with Eddie's wife's best friend. So there's a murder mystery tied into it too. So I thought that it was very, it was a good retelling. I ended up, I don't remember, I think I gave this four stars. I might have given it five. I'm a little, I've gone a little quicker than I thought that I was going to. Yeah, I ended up giving this five stars. I thought that it was a good book. Other people that I've seen have given it four stars because they didn't like how Jane and Eddie's relationship was, but I thought that it was, I thought that it was pretty good because Jane knew what she wanted. Eddie had alternate, alternate, alternate reasons for going into this relationship too. And I just, I, I like reading about villains. Like I like reading stories that are based on villainy characters and characters that have bad intentions. So I liked this book. I thought that it was good. And the next two books that I read were for the, or the next three books actually, were for the historical romance readathon that I was a part of, or that I took part in. And if you have not watched that vlog yet, I'll link it down below for you. But the first book that I ended up reading for that was The Notorious Vow by Joanna Shoup. This was the first Joanna Shoup book that I've ever read before, and I really enjoyed it. This is about a man named Oliver who is deaf and a girl named Christina. Christina's parents are in New York because they are running from their past lives where they're from. I think they're from England. Maybe. I think, I think they're from England. 
I can't really remember, but they are also in a financial bind and they're trying to marry their daughter off to whoever will take her first. Like to the most richy man, not the most eligible, but the richest because all they want is money and they just use her as a pawn to get money. But she ends up meeting Oliver because she's walking through his gardens and they end up meeting and at first Oliver is a very grumpy character and doesn't like people in his in his vicinity because if you didn't know back then people who were deaf were at a very high risk of going to insane asylums because they didn't know they didn't know how to treat people that were deaf they didn't know well, they didn't take the time to learn how to communicate with people they just thought that they were stupid and that's one of the things that Oliver is having to go through because he's trying to invent something to help people that have hearing or that are hearing impaired. But Oliver ends up marrying Christina as an arranged marriage because he finds out that Christina's parents are trying to marry her off to a very, very old dude. But the old dude does not have the best intentions and he just basically wants Christina to be a baby maker. That's pretty much it so Oliver's like no 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 I will take care of this and he marries her and their relationship kind of blooms from there I ended up giving this four stars Christina's character was a little bit naive for me and a little too she was 19 and he was 29 so there's a really big age gap personally I don't mind age gaps as long as the younger one isn't isn't written too young. <laughs> I don't really like reading about super naive and damsel in distresses. I don't I, I don't like reading about those which is kind of why I gave this book four stars because of Christina's character but she did um, she did grow in this book so you did see a lot of character development and she did end up coming into her own and she did end up growing a backbone so I liked it I liked it I thought it was a great start to Joanna shoot the next book that I ended up reading was Night Song by Beverly Jenkins I absolutely freaking love this book it was so good um so this is about a woman named Kara and a man named Chase and they have come across each other before so this is kind of like a second chance romance a little bit but this is written during the Kansas Fever movement, or the Great Exodus, I could say. And I thought that this was like a great love story, plus a great history moment as well. Because I like to learn about that kind of stuff for history. And Kara is a school teacher, so she has very, very, she has a lot of eyes on her. And she has a lot of expectations that are put on her, but she doesn't mind because she really loves her job. And... Chase is a sergeant in the 10th Cavalry, which was a group of black men that served for the military. So he was in that, and they've always been attracted to each other. Has it been the greatest attraction? No. It's kind of like a hate to love type thing, but something happens to where they have to get married and you just see their relationship bloom and it's so pretty and it's so great and this is full of hope this is full of friendship this is full of loyalty this is this is just an all-around really good book and some people are saying that they didn't like the villainy aspect that that was at the end I ate it up I thought it was great but yeah so this five stars I, I really liked it if you want to hear more of my thoughts make sure you check my vlog out because I talk more about it and then I ended up reading a night in rusted armor by my friend Bambi Lynn and this is about a girl named Alice and about a guy named Thorin and Thorin is in the process of trying to win this competition to win the daughter of the king so he can get money and lo and behold the person that he is falling in love with is Alice who is the king's daughter but he doesn't know that when they have a night together because Alice is rebelling against her father because she thinks that she should have the ability to pick her own man, which in my opinion she should. 
arranged marriages. I don't. I don't understand them. I'm not going to say anything bad about them, but the way that her father handled it was not a very good situation, and I can see why Alice rebelled. But Alice's character, at the very beginning, she was just vindictive, and she was just, she was not a very good person, and I had a hard time connecting with her. I liked Thorin, because he's very broody, but he's also very passionate as well, and if you know me, those are my favorite type of characters to read about, like the cinnamon roll characters. But Thorin gives gives it back to her and she doesn't like it very much, so that's why she changes her tune and she ends up falling in love with Thorin. But I really did enjoy the atmosphere of this. I liked the jousting competition thing that was going on. I thought that it was really cool to read about. This kind of gave me like Spartan vibes a little bit. If you've ever watched Spartacus, you'll know what I'm talking about. But instead of like sword fights, it's jousting. So I really did enjoy this. It was like a festival -y atmosphere and it was really cool. And um, Alice, again, she does grow and she does come into her character and all that. So I did end up giving this four stars because of the character development. I thought that it was a really good book. Okay. And then the next book that I ended up picking up was my DNF. I was hoping that I would really love this book, but it was just very slow and I thought that it was a little boring. Um, I have read reviews where people say that it gets better and better and better as it goes, but where I was, I was just kind of stuck. I might pick this up later on, but I don't think that I will. So this is called Vita Nostrata and it's by Marina and Sergi Daikino. Um, it is a translated work from Russian into English and it is about Sasha who gets placed into this really prestigious and really weird school um, and Sasha doesn't want to really be there but she's told that if she doesn't go then bad things would happen to her or her family. So she's kind of forced into the situation and when she gets there, things are not as they seem. People have really weird um, personalities, people do weird things, and she doesn't really know what's going on. But she is determined to make it work because she is a very, very good student and she doesn't want bad things to happen to her family. So that's basically the premise of it. I... Eh, it, I think if you like boarding school type schools, you might, or boarding tool, boarding school type stories, you might really like that, but it just wasn't for me. So I ended up DNF, DNFing that book, and if you know me, I really don't like to DNF books because, um, usually when I pick a book up, I have a good intention, so I'm finishing it, but um, this year I'm not going to not going to do that to myself because if I don't like something I don't need to read it. Alright, number eight. I read The Night Swim by Megan Golden or yeah Golden and this is actually downstairs. I have a copy of it. I ended up giving this five stars. This was another really, really hard book to get through, but it was really good too. Um I ended up reading the audiobook because I heard that that's the best way to go and I completely agree the audiobook was amazing. And it's talking about a rape case and it's also talking about a cold case and it's also talking about victim blaming and it's following the case of this boy and girl where this boy is being accused of raping or not accused he did it but um, of raping this young girl and the person who is our Rachel uh, she is the main character. She's the one who's writing this, or not writing this blog, but she has a podcast that follows these kind of cases, and it goes from her perspective to her podcast and back and forth like that, and it was really, really good. So Rachel gets this mysterious note about this one cold case that happened a really long time about this girl's sister who uh, was found dead. It was mysterious circumstances but they said that it was a suicide or an accidental death and it was just a really cool book. It was really really hard to get through. The less you know 
is better going into it so I'm gonna stop there but I thought that it was a really really good book and it's very hard it has a lot of triggers in it obviously it's about rape and it's about victim blaming but there is a very good outcome so even though it's a tragic story it does have a good ending to it so I would highly recommend that and then the next books that I read two of them were in a series together the first one is Born Darkly by Trisha Wolf. If you are looking for a super dark Joker and Harley Quinn retelling, I would highly recommend this book to you. It's a dark romance about a woman who is a therapist and she ends up falling for a man that is on death row and for murdering people and it's very very dark and twisted it's very very fast paced if you like that type of book i would recommend it to you it ended up giving um born darkly four stars um some of the pacing was a little off for me but i i thought that it was pretty good and then the next book was the born madly and this is also by trisha wolf i ended up picking the second book up in the series and i ended up giving this three stars Oof. I thought that it was a good ending but just some of the things that happened in this book I did not like whatsoever and I thought that it was equally as dark equally as gruesome as the first book but it was not my favorite so there's that so the next book I ended up picking up was Blonde Indian by Ernest Hayes and this is a memoir about Ernest Hayes life and I'm going to be reading off my phone because I don't want to misspeak about this novel. I'm just telling you that right now. So I really loved the historical aspect of this memoir. Um, I really did like to, I, I really love learning about other people's lives. <laughs> Memoirs are one of my favorite nonfiction texts to read because I'm nosy about other people's lives. And I really did enjoy learning about Hayes' life. From the time she was a little bitty girl up until she was an adult and I enjoyed seeing how not the way her beliefs changed but how she went how see this is why it's really hard to talk about somebody else's life because I don't want to say anything that's gonna hurt anyone's feelings or say anything wrong but I thought that how she weaved in the stories from her grandmother from when she was a young girl and how they carried her on through her adult life i really did really really did enjoy that and i thought that their beliefs and i thought that what her tribe went through was very very hard to read but in a way it was also written very beautifully and it was also very interesting to me i thought that i liked i liked learning about it and I said that the struggles her family and she had to go through because of being indigenous were upsetting to read about. Because if you don't know anything about history, which I'm sure you do, indigenous people were driven out of their land because they quote unquote didn't, weren't civilized, they didn't know how to do things. I'm quoting, I'm quotation marks because I don't believe this. The way that indigenous people were driven out of their land or off their land and were made to get rid of the indigenous part of their lives was not okay with me and you could it's not okay it's not right and you could really see how it impacted this particular tribe um and you could really see how it impacted Hayes's life in general because as she grew up she forgot a lot of the things that she learned about as an adult or I'm, I'm sorry as a child because it was pounded in her head this is wrong this is wrong this is wrong you need to think this way like the white people think and I'm not laughing because I think it's funny I'm laughing because I think it's disgusting and it was just it's, it's not okay because they came in the white people came in to this particular town this particular place in Alaska and then they just drove them out and if they didn't leave then they were then indigenous people that lived there were made to go to white schools and were made to believe in what the white people believed and were made to think that their ways were completely wrong and the white people was completely right so again it was a very interesting read i 
gave this book 3.5 out of 5 stars just because of the way that it was written. The way that it was written was a little difficult for me to get through because of the jumps that happened. Not because of the way that Ernestine Hayes, her writing, like her actual writing was not bad, but the writing style, I should say, was not my favorite because of the jumps. Like she would go from her younger life or her childhood and then go to a story about like what her grandmother would tell tell her about how nature how nature is alive and I really liked those sections of it of the actual memoir itself but then it would go to another person's story with that was that lived in the same place that they lived in his name was Tom and I didn't understand I had a hard time connecting the two like they lived in the same place but I didn't understand Tom's connection like I, I, I didn't understand that and then the chapters were really really long and I have a hard time with super long chapters but all in all I thought this was a really really good memoir um, and I do plan on reading more of her works because I thought that they were really interesting and it's just it's it's really it's sad it's sad to see how indigenous people have been treated over the years because it's still happening today. So it's a very, very important read. If you're interested in memoirs, I would, I would highly recommend it to pick it up. All right, and then the last book that I ended up reading for January, I am rereading the Hangman series by Tilly Cole, and I ended up reading Deep Redemption because that's where I stopped in my rereading when I started doing this reading at the beginning of this year and I ended up giving it five stars because Tilly Cole likes to tear my heart out of my chest. <laughs> if you haven't read the Hangman series by her and you are a dark romance lover I would highly recommend picking this series up because it's really good. It's long but it's not like long to where it's drawn out. It's long to where you don't want it to stop. Like never you don't ever want it to stop. Tilly Cole is one of my favorite <laughs> dark romance authors, but yeah, okay, those are all the books that I read. This book, this video is probably super long. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, let me know. Let me know what you read down in the comments. I hope that you have a fabulous day, and I will see you on the next video. Peace.